everybody, Mark Fox here with Amazing Prophecies YouTube channel, Forever Free Ministries, coming to you straight away from Texas. The Supreme Court has ruled unanimously in favor of any worker who wants to observe any day as a Sabbath. This is all about religious freedom in the workplace. This is a historic decision that will affect millions of Americans. Now a person who wants to keep Sunday as his Sabbath can do so. This means that a person who wants to keep Sabbath as, pardon me, Saturday as a Sabbath can do so. This is resounding good news. You can put God first in honoring the Sabbath by not working on that day without losing your job. I think this means that millions of Americans are going to be able to stop working on Sunday or Saturday or whatever day. So the Supreme Court makes an allowance for this, but soon it will decide to require a particular day to be kept holy. A national Sunday law is coming. Right now there is religious freedom to keep any day you want as your Sabbath, but soon religious freedom will mean, according to the Supreme Court, that you must keep Sunday in honor of the resurrection as the holy day. So they're saying Sunday is the Sabbath. We need to clear away the confusion. Stay tuned, everybody. Okay, just before we dive into this provocative message, remember, if you're new, click the bell icon so you don't miss any of our future uploads. Make sure you subscribe. Also, if you'd like to stand with us this month, you can do so. Just look in the description. And in addition to that, share this video, like this video, and help us to get the message around the world. Okay, let's go back to the screen now. National Sunday Law is coming. Then I saw another beast coming out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who worship or who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Revelation 13, 11 and 12. So soon a day of worship will be enforced by the United States Supreme Court and the rest of the world will follow her example. Well, notice the big news. Can you, this is from Derazette News, can you be forced to work on the Sabbath? The Supreme Court will soon weigh in. And of course, it's already happened. And then here we see another news articles, case weighs religious accommodation for Sunday Sabbath. Washington Times, Supreme Court rules for ex-male carrier refusing to work on Sabbath. Fox News, Supreme Court hands religious freedom win to post a worker who refused to work on Sunday. So in other words, the religious freedom is to keep any day for religious purposes, but soon religious freedom is going to be that you can only keep Sunday. Well, New York Times article entitled, Supreme Court sides with postal carrier who refused to work on the Sabbath. Look at this, everyone. The Supreme Court broadened protections for Thursday, this on Thursday for religious workers in case that involved a mail carrier for the U.S. Postal Service who refused to work on his Sabbath. I felt that I had a decision between what the post office wanted and what God wanted of me, Mr. Groff said in an interview on Thursday. I hope that this is inspiring to people because in America we do have these freedoms and they're protected. Mr. Groff was represented by First Liberty Institute, which describes itself as the largest legal organization in the nation focused exclusively on defending religious freedom. Kelly Shackleford, the president and chief counsel of First Liberty, welcomed the ruling, saying that it restored religious freedom to every American in the workplace. This decision will positively help millions and millions of Americans, those who work now and their children and grandchildren, he said. So the latest decision, listen to this, may be less divisive than some of the court's recent rulings on religion, in part because protecting observance of the Sabbath may not split Americans along the usual lines. Indeed, liberal justices have tried in the past to shield workers from dis discipline and termination for following their faith, and all three on the court signed on to the decision. Then here's another article from Christianity Today. Neither snow nor rain nor Sabbath, Supreme Court delivers a victory to a Christian postal worker. 
So the Supreme Court ruled unanimously, all nine ju justices, in favor of a Pennsylvania postal worker who lost his job for refusing to take Sunday delivery shifts due to his Christian observance of the Sabbath. According to court do documents, Groff formally requested religious accommodation to allow him not to work on this day he considered the Sabbath. The head of the post office offered to let Groff start later so he could go to church in the morning, but Groff said that wouldn't work. He had to rest the entire day on Sunday. Wow. The post office head, according to the subsequent lawsuit, also said Groff could take another day as his Sabbath if he wanted. Groff said it had to be Sunday. He wouldn't work on Sunday. We really can't go back and change what happened to me, Groff told uh, Associated Press, but people shouldn't have to choose between their job and their faith, and a court ruling could help others in that kind of situation. <clears throat> AP, the Supreme Court bolsters protections for workers who asked for religious accommodations. In an anonymous decision, the justices made clear that workers who asked for accommodations, such as taking the Sabbath off, should have their requests honored unless employers showed that doing so would result in substantial increased costs to the business. I hope this decision allows others to be able to maintain their convictions without living in fear of losing their jobs because of what they believe, he said. USA Today article, Supreme Court backs Christian worker who wanted Sundays off in case they may have wide impact. The Supreme Court on Thursday sided with an evangelical Christian worker who was denied requests to take Sundays off from his post office job to observe his Sabbath, a decision that could have wide ranging implications for the American workplace. Boy, is that for sure. An, an employer must show that the burden of granting an accommodation would result in substantial increased costs in relation to the conduct of its particular business, Justice Alito wrote. So this is a landmark victory, not only for Gerald, but for every American, said Kelly Shackelford, president of First Liberty Institute, which represented Groff. No American should be forced to choose between their faith and their God. Groff in a statement said he was great, grateful for the outcome. I hope this decision allows others to be able to maintain their convictions without losing, without living in fear of losing their jobs because of what they believe, he said. So Groff, 45 years of age, started at the uh, Postal Service after years of missionary work in Africa and Asia. He wanted a career that would allow him to keep his Sabbath. And since mail isn't delivered on Sundays, the jobs seem to be safe. Bet everything changed when the USPS signed a contract with Amazon in 2013 to deliver packages on weekends. So as someone who strongly supports liberty of all men and women to practice their faith without interference of government or anyone else, I am happy. Okay, this is what I'm saying. I am very happy for this decision by the U.S. Supreme Court. It is good news. I, I observe Sabbath on Saturday. I believe that's the correct day. This decision is good news for whatever day you choose. It's good news regardless of which day one chooses as a spiritual day of rest. The laws of the state should protect this choice. So what impact will the Supreme Court's ruling have all over America? Millions of Americans can now pick a day that they want to keep as as uh, the sabbath and they should uh, the work the employment should help them to be able to keep it so free to keep any day as sabbath but soon free to keep only sunday as the sabbath that's coming so this case inevitably brings up the question that many christians have wondered about across the centuries which day is in fact this true Sabbath commanded by God in the Holy Scriptures. The Bible traces the origin of the Sabbath all the way back, long before there was a Jew, back to the creation of this world. Listen to what we find in Genesis 2, 1 to 3. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day, notice, seventh day, God ended his work which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day, from all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. 
And so that's Genesis 2, 1 to 3. So there's so much confusion about which day is the day that God wants us to honor, Sunday or Saturday. Which day is the true Sabbath? Well, the seventh day Sabbath, in other words, is a memorial of God's creation. This is why the fourth commandment tells us to do no work on the seventh day and thus to keep it holy. Remember, remember God wrote this with his own finger and he spoke it on Mount Sinai. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work. Very simple. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your maiden servant, nor your maid servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made or created the heavens and the earth. All right, so the Sabbath is a memorial, a reminder of the, the uh, creation of the world. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Exodus 20, verse 11. Look here, everybody. So this is very clear that the Sabbath is one of the Ten Commandments. So whatever the Supreme Court says in the future, we must stay with the Word of God. What do we say? Our motto is, if it's in the Bible, we want it. If it's not in the Bible, we don't want it. We want to follow Jesus with all of our heart. He says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Let's go back to the, uh, back to the slides. All right, so let's go back to the screen. Now, some folks have the idea that all one needs to do uh, to keep the commandment is pick one day out of the week and dedicate it to the Lord. When God reintroduced the Sabbath to his people after their many years of captivity in Egypt, it was clear that the day on which the Sabbath was held was not flexible. Only one day was to be kept sacred. When God gave the manna to Israel in the wilderness, this was the fresh bread manna from heaven that sustained them through their wanderings. This is what he told them through Moses. And so it was on the sixth day, by the way, that's Friday, preparation day, that they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for each one. And all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. Then he said to them, this is what the Lord has said. Tomorrow is a Sabbath rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you will bake today and boil what you will boil and lay up for yourselves all that remains to be kept until morning. So they laid it up till morning as Moses commanded, and it did not stink, nor were there any worms in it. Then Moses said, eat that today, for today is a Sabbath to the Lord. Today you will find not find it in the field. Six days you, sh you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, there will be none. Exodus 16, 22 to 28. So it's obvious, everyone, that from these verses that the Sabbath was to take place on one particular day, the seventh day. This is clear in the New Testament as well. When Jesus' body was prepared for burial after his death on the cross, then they returned and prepared spices with fragrant oils, and they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. Now on the first day of the week, that Sunday, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb bringing the spices which they had prepared. In other words, the Sabbath, according to the commandment, was the seventh day, that's Saturday, because the next verse says the women returned to finish the preparation of Jesus' body on the morning of the first day of the week. And that's when they found out that they wouldn't need to finish preparing his body because he had risen. The fact that the Sabbath was intended for all humanity because it was established at creation is clear from the words of Christ himself when he told the Pharisees that the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath, Mark 2, 27. So why, <clears throat> excuse me, why don't we read about any of the other Old Testament holy days being made for man? All of those were made for God's Old Testament people and came to an end when Jesus died on Calvary. So why do, this is a big question, everyone. Why do most Christians worship on Sunday, the first day of the week, rather than Saturday, the seventh day of the week? You won't find any evidence in the New Testament for this change from Saturday to Sunday. Listen to this very clear claim by the Roman Catholic Church. In the Catechism, question, which is the Sabbath day? 
Answer, Saturday is the Sabbath day. Question, why do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? Answer, we observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. So who changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday? Speaking about the Roman Church, the Roman Catholic Church, he shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change times and law. Daniel 7, 25. What's the only commandment that has to do with time? The Sabbath. And so, in the book of Daniel, God predicted that the papacy would attempt to change the divine law. So despite the papacy's claim to have changed the Sabbath to Sunday, no Bible evidence for such a change can be found. So one of the biggest crimes committed by the Roman Catholic Church is to change the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday and then to claim that God gave them the authority to do so. Most people do not realize this historic fact. The Roman Catholic Church has made three changes to the Ten Commandments. Number one, deleted the second commandment about not making images to worship. Number two, divided the Tenth Commandment, making it two commandments about not coveting. Number three, changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. So look here. There is no Bible evidence that God changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. It rather came to us from the Catholic Church, and all you need to do is look at the Catholic Catechism. That's all you need to do, and you'll see what they are saying in contrast to what the Word of God says. So we want to go with the Word of God. We want to go with the Bible. We want to go with the Ten Commandments. Let's keep going, everybody. So, in the Catholic Catechism, it says, now watch this. For the Christian, the observance of the Sabbath is transferred to Sunday, the day that Jesus rose from the dead. So they're saying it was changed. God, through the church, obliges us to make Sunday holy by participating in the Eucharist and by our being prayerfully reflective as far as possible. Sunday observance fulfills the interior law inscribed in the human heart to render to God visible in public worship as a sign. So Sunday observance is a sign of radical dependence upon God and as gratitude for all the blessings we have received. The celebration of Sunday observes the moral commandment inscribed by nature in the human heart to render to God an outward, visible, public, and regular worship as a sign. Notice Sunday worship is a sign of his universal beneficence to all. Notice how this obligation comes through the church, not through the Bible. Again, the words of Jesus come to mind. In vain they worship me, teaching his doctrines the commandments of men. Matthew 15, verse 9. Notice also how Sunday observance is identified above as a sign, but the Bible, by contrast, speaks of the Seventh-day Sabbath as a sign of loyalty and sanctification to God. Moreover, I also gave them my Sabbath to be a sign between them and me that they might know that I am the Lord who sanctifies them, Ezekiel 20, verse 12. So God's special sign of his authority as the creator is the Seventh-day Sabbath. Moreover, I also gave them my Sabbath to be a what? a sign between them and me that they might know that I am the Lord who sanctifies them. So what did it, what does it say in Revelation 1.10? I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. So what does the Roman Catholic Church claim as a mark of their religious and power and authority? Sunday observance. Sunday is our mark of authority. The church is above the Bible, and this transference of Sabbath observance is proof of that fact. These are Catholic sources. Another Catholic source. Of course, the Catholic Church claims that the change from Sabbath to Sunday is her act, and the act is a mark of her ecclesiastical authority in religious matters. Sunday is our mark of authority. In the Catechism, it says, in respecting religious liberty, the common good of all, Christians should seek recognition of Sundays and the church's holidays as legal holidays. In other words, the Sunday should be made law, a national Sunday law. So the mark of the beast, Sunday sacredness, 
a false Sabbath will be enforced in the near future. So no one has the mark of the beast now, but soon that mark of their authority, Sunday observance, will be enforced by the Supreme Court. Sooner or later, there will be a national Sunday law. Now, what did John Pope John Paul II have to say about Sunday rest? When through the centuries she, the Catholic Church, has made laws concerning Sunday rest, Sunday laws, the Church has had in mind, above all, the work of servants and workers, certainly not because of this work was any less worthy when compared to the spiritual requirements of Sunday observance, but rather because it needed greater regulation to lighten its burden and thus enable everyone to keep the Lord's Day holy. So what is it saying? There should be a national Sunday law. Therefore, also in the particular circumstances of our own time, Christians will naturally strive to ensure that civil legislation respects their duty to keep Sunday holy. So what did Pope Francis have to say about Sunday rest? Do you know that the Pope has been urging the world to have Sunday rest to help combat climate change? Here's a quote from the Pope. Sunday, like the Jewish Sabbath, is meant to be a day which heals our relationships with God, with ourselves, with others, and with the world. The law of weekly rest forbade work on the seventh day so that your ox and your donkey may have rest and the son of your maid servant and the stranger may be refreshed. Rest opens our, watch what he says here. Rest opens our eyes to the larger picture and gives us renewed sensitivity to the rights of others. And so that day of rest centered on the Eucharist sheds its light on the whole week and motivates us to greater concern for nature and the poor. So the Pope Francis is saying, Sunday laws, Sunday rest will help the environment because it will motivate people to want to take care of nature and the poor. That's from his encyclical letter entitled Laudato Si, his official letter on the environment and how we need to have Sunday rest to help combat climate change. So Pope Francis is promoting Sunday rest as part of the solution for climate change. So Pope Francis is promoting a common day for the common good and good for our common home. And then here's another article. If you have the right to rest, uh, pardon me, if you have the right to work, you have the right to rest, Pope says. The dignity of, dignity of workers was at the center of an address by Pope Francis on Saturday during which the pontiff reflected on the connection between the right to employment and the right to leisure. This right to rest, Pope Francis said, above all, refers to a dimension of the human being which does not lack those spiritual roots in which even you, for your part, are responsible. Leisure is not merely an extension of fatigue and ordinary responsibilities, but an occasion to live one's own creaturelessness, elevated to filial dignity by God himself, he said. He cited the scripture account of creation in which God calls man to rest on the seventh day, concluding that rest in the language of faith is therefore at once a human and divine dimension. Pope Francis stressed the Italian National Social Security Institute members' responsibility in promoting a true sense of rest. This is a particular challenge today owing to factors such as insufficient employment, opportunities and lack of job security. And if we live like this, how can we rest? The Pope asked. Rest is the right which we all have when we have work. And of course, promoting Sunday worship. But this right is challenged in the face of unemployment, social injustice and hazardous work. The right to rest and the right to work are dependent on one another. True rest comes from true work, he said. Okay, so here's what I'm saying. We thank the Lord, this is me speaking, we thank the Lord for the Supreme Court's decision to protect the right of a Sunday keeper to observe his chosen day of rest. But the day is coming soon, folks, when the laws of our land will actually enforce the observance of Sunday, not simply allow it. Look, look here, everybody, did you hear that? The day is coming soon, folks, when the laws of our land will actually enforce the observance of Sunday, not simply allow it. Let's go back to the screen. What big decision did the Supreme Court make in 1961 that every should concern every Sabbath keeper? What landmark event happened in 1961 
that should concern Sabbath keepers around the world. In 1961, the Supreme Court upheld the constitutionality of Sunday closing laws so long as they are seen to serve a secular purpose. <laughs> Excuse me. In 1961, Maryland Sunday closing law is constitutional. The U.S. Supreme Court's decision, McGovern versus Maryland, upheld Maryland's Sunday law closing laws as not violating the federal constitution because Sunday has become secularized American society. That the day is one of relaxation rather than religion. And here's the uh, late Pope, the 23rd, who says in light of the uh, legislation by the Supreme Court, appearing before delegates at a union convention, the pontiff pleaded for the proper observance everywhere of Sunday as a day of rest. This presupposes a change of mind in society and intervention of the powers of the state. Sunday will really be a day of God when this comes about. It will be recognized as a social right. That's why the Supreme Court has approved Sunday laws because they believe it's a social right. It will be recognized as a social right to be enjoyed by all classes of society for the exercise of their religious duties and the practicing of works of charity. The church will be happy when it takes this place. Pope John the 23rd quoted by Religious News Service, September 21, 1961. Sunday, it will be recognized as a social right. Now, in the encyclical Rerum Novarum, in 1891, Pope Leo XII called upon civil governments to provide Sunday rest as a worker's right, which the state must guarantee. So you see, what's going to happen? What's going to happen is very soon the Supreme Court is going to mandate a day of rest on Sunday. They will issue a national Sunday law, and then the rest of the world is going to follow her example. Let's go back to the screen. So the spirit of intolerance is in our land, folks, even regarding the issue of which day on which to worship, and we ain't seen nothing yet. The second beast of Revelation 13 is the United States of America, and I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, spoke like a dragon, and he had exercises all the authority of the first beast, the papacy, in his presence, and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. That's false worship that will be enforced by the Supreme Court. So some kind of false worship that came from the Roman Catholic Church, Sunday observance, is going to be enforced first in the United States and then ultimately around the world. The United States of America is based on religious and political freedom. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof to issue a national Sunday law that would be a violation of the U.S. Constitution. So in the book, Myth of Separation, What is the Correct Relationship Between Church and State? This is by David Barton, who is mistaken. But it's easy to see how such reasoning by the court could lead to laws enforcing what some have already called a uniform national Sabbath, in the words of religious right activist David Barton in his 1992 book, The Myth of Separation. In this same book, Barton speaks favorably of the following statement by 1853 U.S. Senate Judiciary Committee. Sunday, the Christian Sabbath, by the way, the Bible doesn't say that, but this is what he's saying. Sunday, this Christian Sabbath, and Saturday is the Christian Sabbath, but this is what he's saying. Sunday, the Christian Sabbath, is recognized and respected by all the departments of the government. Here is a recognition by law and by universal usage, not only of a Sabbath, but of the Christian Sabbath in exclusion of the Jewish Mohammedan Sabbath. So will religious persecution arise in America in the near future? Yes. You know, think about it. Pope Francis made a historic visit and speech met with overwhelming support and approval of the public, the press, and leaders of government. And this is a picture of him speaking before the U.S. Congress uh, there in Washington, D.C. at the Capitol in 2015. Oh, the Bible makes it clear. 
And I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. So a major part of the public relations campaign of the Roman Catholic Church is to seek to regain moral and global influence and authority. All Americans would do well to petition the president and the Congress to make a federal law, an amendment to the Constitution if need be, to reestablish the Sabbath, meaning Sunday here, as a national day of rest. That's taken from Catholic Twin Circle, August 25, 1985 article entitled Sacking Sunday. When a national Sunday law was proposed in the U.S. Congress back in 1888, one Alonzo T. Jones had an impassioned exchange with Senator Blair of New Hampshire. Let's listen for such a moment to their discussion. Senator Blair says, Is it not a requirement of God's that we render to Caesar that which is due to Caesar? And A.T. Jones says, Yes. Senator Blair says, If Caesar is society and the Sabbath is required for the good of society, does not God require us to establish the Sabbath for the good of society? And if society makes a law accordingly, isn't it not binding? A.T. Jones, watch this. A.T. Jones says, It is for the good of society that men shall be Christians, but it is not in the province of the state to make Christians. For the state to undertake to do so would not be for the benefit of society. It never has been, and it never can be. Wow. A.T. Jones was right. So, in conclusion, the Bible is clear, as we have seen, that the Seventh-day Sabbath is a sign or seal of our loyalty to God. But the book of Revelation talks about another sign, a mark, that will be enforced by the government of this world at the command of the beast power, which both the Bible and history identify as Roman papacy. This mark will be received either by choice or by force, either in the forehead or in the hand of Revelation 13, 16. So the hand may at times be forced, but the mind can never be. That's why God's seal is given only in the forehead because God only desires the service of free choice and true love. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life. What's that precious word? Freely. So look here, everybody. We want to go worth the word of God. If it's in the Bible, look here, everybody. If it's in the Bible, we want it. If it's not in the Bible, we don't want it. We want to go with the word of God. So you have a choice. <clears throat> the word of God or the words of man. The word of God, the truth, or the words of man and tr church tradition that clashes with the Bible. If you had to choose between the two, which you have to, what are you going to choose? As for me and my house, we will not follow the catechism. We will follow the word of God. It is written. Remember when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness? Three times his answer was to every temptation, it is written, it is written. It is written. And so this is time for us to love the Word of God, to cherish the Word of God, go by the Word of God. Jesus died for our sins according to the Word of God. Jesus intercedes for us according to the Word of God. Jesus is coming for us according to the Word of God. Praise God. You and I can cherish the Word of God. We can love the promises of God. Remember Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. That includes the seventh-day Sabbath. I'd like you to leave a comment below. If you believe what you've heard, simply state, I believe the truth of Jesus. Go ahead and leave a comment. I believe the truth of Jesus. Go ahead. I believe the truth of Jesus. Go ahead and write it down. Just leave a comment below. I believe the truth of Jesus. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I pray that we would take a stand for Jesus, a stand for the truth, a stand for the Word of God, a stand for the true Bible Sabbath, the truth. Help us, Lord, to realize that we can know the truth and the truth sets us free, John 8, 32. In Jesus' name, amen. So this is Mark Fox signing off for now. Remember the day to keep it holy. What day? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. That's what God says. And so... Mark Fox signing off for now. Remember, Jesus died for you.